currently trying to figure out exactly what I'm going to make with these and uh, we'll, we'll figure it out together. One way I am using my Japanese knotweed, I washed, prepared it, and cut it up. And I am adding Hendrix gin or any gin. And I'm going to fill this up. And this will become gin that is infused with knotweed, which would give it a rhubarb flavor. Ooh. Gin and tonics that are flavored like rhubarb, sign me up. We're gonna cover this up and let this hang out for probably three to four weeks. The next knotweed recipe I'm going to make is a simple syrup infused with knotweed. So um, in my saucepan, I have one cup of sugar and I'm going to add one cup of water. That's a one to one ratio. I'm just going to heat this up and stir until the sugar is all dissolved. If I just wanted to make a simple syrup, that would be enough for the simple syrup, but because I'm going to infuse it, there's another step after that. But it's a very simple recipe. Now that the sugar has all dissolved, I'm going to add my one and a half cups of Japanese knotweed to this. Um, put the temperature of the heat to a simmer and simmer it for 10 minutes, stirring often. This is hopefully going to get a really nice rhubarb flavor in the simple syrup that we can use on ice creams, cheesecakes, in some cordials, it'll be great. Simmer up, babies, simmer up. This is just the simple syrup simmering uh, being infused with the Japanese knotweed stalks that are cut up. Um, this has been simmering for about 10 minutes. It said you can stop here and I'm gonna let this infuse a little bit longer and then I will use my strainer to strain all of the Japanese knotweed out and then keep it um, in a glass jar. I let this simmer for probably 15 minutes and now I'm going to bring this over and we are going to hopefully, if all goes well, strain uh, the Japanese knotweed simple syrup um, into uh, this bowl and we'll be able to kind of mash out all of the Japanese knotweed, getting everything out of it um, and letting it cool and then I'll stick it in this, uh, this ball jar. That's the plan. After I mashed it up, that's what was left of the Japanese knotweed. And then, and then I use this again just to get anything else out. But this is our Japanese knotweed simple syrup. I'm gonna let that cool and then I'll uh, give it a try. So to recap, the three recipes you can make using Japanese knotweed, a Japanese knotweed simple syrup that's infused, a Japanese knotweed that's infusing in gin. And my favorite, a Japanese knotweed muffin. It is a 10 out of 10. I wish you could smell this. It is so good. Wow. The last recipe I made with the Japanese knotweed that I I harvested not the shoots, but the root was a tincture. And I did this on uh, May, 5th, uh, May 2nd. 
and it will be done June 13th, so I've labeled it. And it um, is made with the root that I cut up. You can kind of see it in there. You see how dark and almost yellowy or ambery the, the liquid is. This was Everclear, which is a 75% alcohol, um, which is clear, okay? It's like a, a grain alcohol, like a vodka. And now, after just soaking for three days, it looks like that. So this is, this is what I read. Uh, the tincture of the Japanese knotweed root is good for kind of reversing or helping to reverse the effects of Lyme disease. Um, so I have so much root harvested. I've only did just a portion, but this is a quart size jar and I'm going to do a double tincture. So this liquid is, is just um, the Everclear alcohol, but I'm also going to do a, um, an extract of water and kind of blend the two of them together. So I'm gonna have a ton of this tincture when I'm, when I'm done with, with this. Um, but this is just another, another thing you can do um, if you have a lot of Japanese knotweed. Again, it's not, a it's not really great to have because it's a super invasive plant, but if you do have it, you can use some of it medicinally right here, or um, you can eat some of the shoots in the spring. Mm -hmm. 